Hi, we've just finished the first two weeks sitting in 2016 in state parliament and we thought we'd give you a little bit of information about what we've been up to and, and see if you like this kind of reporting style. Have we been up to anything? We've been a bit busy. Okay. Anyway, I suppose the most important thing, whilst it wasn't actually in Parliament, was the incredible rally we had out in the steps of Parliament. Lynn spoke and it was stunning. Thanks. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. There was about a thousand people uh, protesting against the anti-protest bill, which just passed the Parliament when we came back. Um, and unfortunately, we weren't able to get through any of our, our amendments, but we fought hard and we also moved to send it to committee. So we, we did a good job debating yeah. it over a year, but it has passed the upper house and now it goes to the lower house for debate. Watch this space, there's gonna be a lot more to hear about yeah. this bill. I, look, I just need to commend, the organization of that rally was only about three or four days. Yeah, it was about it, a week, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah so, it was just funny. Yeah. And if they can do that in three or four days, it was great. Anyway, really we, we did actually do some work in Parliament. Um, so in addition to the yeah. protest, actually the first week we were debating that bill. So the whole first week was taken up with yeah. debate on that bill and we had extra sitting time for it. But we did get our first uh, non-government business on the Thursday and we moved a motion calling for an inquiry into environmental protection in Western Australia. Yeah, look, that, that was pretty stunning because we were actually able to put on the record uh, many of the issues that have occurred around environmental protection over the last couple of years and that was obviously well even longer than that last three years mm. that was the failure over James Price Point mm -hmm. uh, it was obviously ruled out by the courts we had row, row eight, eight which was invalid. ruled out yeah uh, and then there were other things which were sort of associated with it we had the planning uh, legislation by Brennan Grills knocked back twice over James Price Point and we've now sort of got a situation where the EPA is no more than just a rubber stamp uh, mm. for government sort of edict. I um, also use the opportunity to bring up those two matters relating to uh, the animals that were added to the threatened species list because we're having more and more animals that are escalating in their threat, uh, in, in the threat to their population. So that was, a, we think, a serious failure to, I mean, to protect tree. those animals. And that tree, the Jarrah tree, the, the over 200 year old Jarrah tree in Kublup, which was felled. So th they all add up to a failure of environmental protection. We called for an urgent inquiry and Labor Party, Liberal Party, Nationals, they all didn't agree with us. Even the shooters and fishers disagreed, yeah. but we know that you agree. Yeah. Anyway, and then we went on to our exciting piece of legislation uh, this week, oh, not exciting, no, none of the legislation in this place is exciting, I not can assure you. Not this week. But no. uh, we actually were dealing with the Perth City Bill and... Uh, Capital City. Capital City's Bill. Yeah. But the issue I suppose is there that uh, it's actually a, in essence about a forced amalgamation uh, without uh, the city of Subiaco mm -hmm. having a say in it because they take 3,000 residents out of Suvi and put them in Perth and they don't have a say in this. So Robin moved several amendments to try and fix the bill because we wanted to represent all the people that have been writing to us saying that you know local government shouldn't be changed in this manner. We yeah. do support having a capital city oh, yeah. but this isn't the way to do it and we had the support of Simon O'Brien who's a liberal and all the nationals so we all voted uh, in against, against this bill because Robin's amendments were, weren't accepted. Yeah, so those two bills were the ones that passed through Parliament in this fortnight. In addition to that, of course, we asked questions, lots of questions. Uh, I asked questions about Coburn Sound fish kill, the, uh, that felling of the Jarrah tree to try and determine who was responsible for making that decision. Uh, also, some of the questions about Mangles Bay and how much it's going to cost to dredge those canals. All that information is available on Hansard and we'll, we can send you an email link if you're interested in a short report that will tell you a little bit more about the questions we asked. But Robin asked some really important questions too. Yeah, I suppose my, my big one was most probably uncovering the fact that notwithstanding two major reports into the Broburn prison, that there is no air conditioning in the cells and a couple of weeks ago the prisoners were in their cells locked down in 48 degrees. 48 degrees is hard yeah. to imagine. So the and two previous yeah the two previous reports yeah. had identified uh, they were government reports 
identified that the conditions were inhumane mm. and the government's done nothing about it. Mm. Um, so that's come to light and that'll be doing the rounds in the media in the next few few days. Also asked a few questions on the Burrup, cattle kills, all those sorts of things on the road out there. So again, all these questions are available. Uh, we can either send them to you or you can pop onto our websites or yep. Facebook pages and see what's going on. Let us know what you want more information about. And let us know if you like this little video format because we'll keep it up. We've got two weeks out in our electorates, then we'll be back here in Parliament and hopefully you'll be watching us then. All the best.